Uh, hello everyone. A very warm welcome to our channel. Uh, today we have a very special guest with us, Shubham, and Shubham will be sharing his insights as to how to make a career in commercial due diligence. And you know, especially he'll also touch upon as to how it helped him in his entrepreneurial journey. Uh, hi, Shubham. Hi, Veer. Hello. Hi. So, uh, Shubham, for the benefit of our audience, can you quickly introduce yourself? Right. Thanks, Veer. Thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity. And, you know, it, it's always uh, good to help the younger people who, who are in this phase. So I'll, I'll start with a quick introduction of mine. I, as you said, I'm Shubham. I'm a chartered accountant by qualification and I'm an entrepreneur in the energy space. I did my undergrad from Delhi University, Sri Ram College of Commerce, batch of 2016. I did my BCom honors from there. And I was pursuing chartered accountancy alongside my undergrad. I completed my IPC while I was in college. After my undergrad uh, in 2016, I joined KPMG as an article assistant in their statutory audit division. I joined the Kurgaon practice of KPMG. My job was in the statutory audit profile. And the core industries that I worked during my three years of article ship were uh, energy, oil and gas, oil and gas energy one. Second, hospitality, and third was food and beverages. It was uh, quite a wholesome experience in terms of uh, different industries that I worked into and the kind of jobs that I was assigned to. After completing my uh, article ship and qualifying as a chartered accountant, I joined MA Consulting Practice of uh, KPMG in the Gurgaon office itself. So, MA Consulting is a broader term, and uh, within the MA Consulting, I was a part of the commercial due diligence team. I was, I remained with KPMG in, uh, in together for about four, four and a half years and which was split between statutory audit and m &A consulting. After my four and a half years of stint with KPMG and learning the best corporate, I'm one of the best corporate practices. I started a venture in the oil and gas space. And since then it's been a roller coaster ride, but with immense learnings. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so Shubham, can you also briefly touch upon exactly what, what, what did you do in, on a day-to-day -day basis in CDD? Right. So CDD is, is an acronym for commercial due diligence. And uh, so I'll, I'll tell you how, how the practice came into picture and why is it such an important role? So whenever uh, there, there are two companies that are planning a particular merger or a joint venture or, or for that matter, merger also, any kind of restructuring that two companies are planning, they do it for a reason. And that reason is particularly a synergy that they identify that what is the benefit that we are going to achieve while we do this restructuring because restructuring is a typical job. It requires a lot of effort. It requires expenditure. It requires sparing of a lot of resources. So there are, there are synergies that every company identifies that it aims to achieve with a particular restructuring, whether it is a merger or an acquisition. As a consultant in the commercial due diligence space, you have to deeply analyze and evaluate whether the synergy that the company or the board of directors of the company have in mind, whether those synergies are, are you know, uh, whether, whether it actually makes sense to go with that particular merger and whether those synergies can be realized or not. Because often the board of directors have a preconceived notion, but the on-ground realities are quite different. So as a commercial due diligence or an, as an m &A consultant, you have to do a thorough analysis of both the companies, company A and company B that are involved in restructuring and see whether it commercially and operationally makes sense to go with the merger and whether the benefits that the board of directors are expecting, whether they'll be realized after the merger or not. Got it. Got it. That is, that, that is, what, I'm, that is what the objective of the profile is. And if you want me to touch upon how, how, how do we actually do it? I'll be more than happy to explain it. Yes, please go ahead. So, uh, right. So, uh, the job overall commercial due diligence job or an m &A consulting job involves, uh, yeah, it's a 12 week, uh, around, uh, 12 weeks of job, around six to 12 weeks of job, depending on the scale of the transaction. And as an MA consultant, what you do is you divide the companies, company A and company B into four or five broad functions. These functions, because, you know, it's difficult to analyze company in totality. So it's better that you spread the companies into four or five smaller parts, which we typically call as functions and function by function, you see that how, how the merged function of company A and company B would look like and whether the expected synergy would be yielded or not. So these 
broad five functions that a consultant divides the company is would be one is the most important, which is the business. The other probably is supply chain. The third very important these days is information technology. The fourth comes HR because people, uh, because uh, integration of people is very important. And fifth depends on company to company, but it could be uh, it could be legal or any other operations for that matter. If it's an asset, or it's a cap capex intensive uh, company, it, then operations play a huge role. So I'll give you an example of one of the deals that I worked into and how we uh, uh, reached a conclusion whether the uh, transaction would be beneficial or not. So uh, these were the two companies in the power industry, two Indian conglomerates in the power industry, and they wanted to have a merger. This expected synergy of the board of directors of the company was that the merged entity would be able to deeper penetrate into the market and whitewash the competition in the market. I mean, two companies A and B, when they are C together, they'll be able to capture the market better and they'll be the market leaders and white and, and you know, just eliminate the smaller companies and competitions in the market. So what we did was we split the company A and company B and this idea because it involved more of, you know, expectation of increased business. Hence our commercial due diligence involved more around the business component of, uh, of both the companies rather than operations, IT, HR or other uh, functions. We focus more on the business component of both the companies. So company A's uh, business was analyzed deeply, company B's business model was analyzed deeply. And when I say the business was analyzed deeply, I mean, we prepared a thorough analysis on the business models of these companies, how the cash flow is generated in each of these two companies, what are their typical uh, working capital life cycles, how quickly the cash is generated, what are their, uh, you know, uh, the relationship with their creditors or debtors in the market. What are the kind of target markets they have, whether they have any international markets. So basically the, the overall business model of these two companies was thoroughly analyzed and, and it was, uh, and, and, and the, and as a as consultant, we prepared a full report that how these two business models can be integrated given the differences. So it, it led to a very, very, um, uh, interesting, con interesting conclusion. Why? Because, uh, we, as, as consultants, we recommended our clients that, okay, no doubt after five years, uh, um, you know, the synergies that you're expecting will definitely yield because both of you will be a combined entity and you will achieve a good market share. But for the first five years, you will be rather on a losing side because of the differences in your uh, qualification criteria. So the power industry is quite regulated. So company A qualified for a few uh, bids. And company B qualified for the other, uh, for did not qualify for those set of bids, which meant that when you synergize as company A and company B, you won't be able to qualify for the bids that company A otherwise qualify as a non-merged entity. So, so for the first five years, the merged entity would be disqualified for a few bids. And after five years, when that uh, uh, lock-in period ends, then only the expected synergies will be realized. So there was a huge uh, difference in the monetary value of benefit of the merger that got reduced because the uh, business combined business that was to come for the first five years had to be had to be uh, spared away if, if they went ahead with the merger. So as, as consultants, we gave them this insight. And uh, while giving this insight, we also had to come up with the mitigation factors that how this entire loss of business would be uh, minimized and what, what other way they can look at restructuring. Probably they can go with, right, with, with a JV and then with a merger. So there were different ways. So this is how you, um, you know, deal with the commercial angle of our m a space and see whether commercially it actually due diligence, it means thorough analysis. Whether commercially uh, it makes sense to, uh, you know, to do the merger and whether uh, whether the expectations of the board of directors is actually what is actually in line with what the on ground situation is. Got it. Got it. Amazing. Wow. That that sounds really exciting. <laughs> she won't say. Okay. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, it, it is a, it is a dynamic job. It involves, you know, uh, discussion with a lot of uh, high people, high C suit officers, CXOs. So it is interesting to see how different viewpoints come from different functions. Just as I said. Right, right, right. Okay, amazing. That brings me to the next question, uh, Shubham. Uh, what are the typical skills required for this profile? 
Right. So in terms of your uh, skills, you should be very thorough in terms of your uh, uh, few, few basic skills, right? So you should be very thorough with how valuation of a company looks like and what are the uh, different valuation techniques because see you're not when you're an m a consultant you're not uh, typically required to do a valuation but what you are required to do is you have to read valuation reports and from that and from those valuation reports you have to see what what is the business model or what are the forecasts that the company is planning in the near future so you should be well, well versed with the valuation techniques number one number two you should be uh, able to analyze what the financial statements of the company are reflecting. As chartered accountants, uh, all of us uh, prepare uh, balance sheets and I mean, n number of times while we prepare for CA courses. But, but the additional skill set that you should have is that you should be able to analyze from the balance sheet of a company or profit and loss of the company, the, the qualitative aspects. I mean, the financial statements do tell you the quantitative aspects, but you should be able to clearly identify the qualitative aspects because that is where you value add as a chartered accountant. Number two. Number three, you should be, of course, basics like MS Office uh, are very important. Your Excel tricks should be strong because you'll have to go through uh, a lot of dumps, a lot of data that, for example, we got the sales register that, that in size was of almost 50 to 60 MB, an Excel file of 50 to 60 MB. So the, uh, the, uh, we, we had to use a lot of Excel techniques to compro, you know, comprehend the data in the most effective manner. So your Excel skills should be good. Your MS PowerPoint should be good because you have to prepare decks for CEOs, CXOs, CFOs, all the C-suit officers. So your MS office should be really good. You should be really sound in creating uh, decks and everything. Fourth, your analytics, business analytics power or, or, you know, your understanding of different functions should be good. In the sense that your your uh, viewpoint, because I started accountants, what I saw was that I am telling you from this experience, my uh, my domain, my my you know uh, uh, subconscious in the subconscious mind, I was more inclined towards the finance functions of the organization because during my start audit days, I used to work closely with finance. When I came to M and was required to look at a holistic view. So don't just focus on finance. Have a comprehensive view of different functions, and for that, read a lot of case competitions because a case competition would give you a real uh, you know a good uh, stimul stimul stimuli of how the actual functions of an organization would work so focus on uh, case competition so these three four things basically you don't require any particular skill set, skill set but these gen general management skills are more important when you go for commercial due diligence okay okay got it got it that, that's very helpful and so, Shubham, can you also touch upon as to who are the typical employers for this, uh, for commercial due diligence practice? Sure, so you can divide the employer category into, I think, uh, three or four broad subcategories. Number one, of course, the much coveted uh, big three consulting firms, which are McKinsey, Bain and BCG. After that, all these companies have a separate uh, division for M&A &A, &A consulting. After that, all your big fours also have an M&A consulting practice. They are, and in fact, big four, some of the one of one or two of the big fours are always the market leaders in M&A because, uh, because they do a lot of lateral hiring from their divisions. So they have a lot of uh, predefined, you know, in-house, I would say, skill set when it comes to M&A. So big, four are, big fours are a very good choice for CAs when it comes to M&A consulting. Number three, your uh, investment banking companies also have investment banking firms. In fact, all your uh, tier one, tier two boutique investment banking, every investment banking firms also, also have M&A consulting because they're directly involved in the deals. And after that, the fourth category is the industry. Uh, big conglomerates like Reliance, Aditya Birla Capital, Aditya Birla Group, etc. All these companies have an in-house M&A team because they go for a lot of uh, small acquisitions. Consider Reliance, for example. Aditya Birla also goes for a lot of you know small acquisitions. They have in-house teams also. So the first three categories for for were more from a consulting perspective. The last category is from an industry perspective. Amazing. Okay. So uh, so Shubham, can you also uh explain how how to get into this profile because what from what i've, I've heard is that uh mo mostly people you know so the employers prefer mbas right and there are very few cas who are actually able to get into commercial due diligence practice 
Right, Beer. I mean, uh, absolutely on point because uh, it's the general trend in market that MBAs are, you know, more, uh, more uh, uh, capable when it comes to consulting than as as compared to chartered accountants. That's the trend in the market. You're right. But you know, as a chartered accountant, I would say there are quite a lot of ways in which you can get into these non uh, uh, non conventional profiles. As a chartered accountant, you directly do not go into commercial due diligence. You go into integration projects. because integration projects are a little less critical than the consulting projects so uh, i mean that that is how people anyway perceive it so you as chartered accountants you are hired into a few m and a integration projects and after you do one or two integration projects and on the job you tell your managers or your partners or you in your way of working you tell them that okay i am more capable than doing an integration job or within after one or two integration jobs you are well versed with the m and a space and And during your integration jobs, you give more of you know analytics and strategy related points. These employers, big four especially, do consider you to shift you uh, shift to you to the CDD profiles. So uh, and in some cases they do interview you directly for CDD also. But I agree the hiring is less. So hiring for the easier route is you go into integration projects of uh, M and A. work there for one or two projects build a skill set around mna show your employers that you are more capable of you know strategizing rather than just implementing so they will definitely give you a chance in uh, one or two strategy projects cdd projects and once they give you a chance and you uh, you know you perform up to their expectations they consider you as a part of the cdd team also okay okay got it got it okay so that brings us to the last uh, segment right uh, so any tips that you would like to take uh, give to a person who wants to make a career in commercial due diligence sure so uh, I, what i have realized in uh, you know after remaining in this space for around 2 to 1 and a half years is that you don't require a particular you know there's no rocket science behind uh, cdd you know or, or behind being a mna consultant person mna consultant you just need to be well versed with how the market is functioning and one very important way of doing is you should read about the live mna deals continuously there are a lot of mna deals that happen either on either at small level big mid like mid size level or even at bigger levels even if you don't get to you know read about bigger deals uh, very often there are always cases when you can read about the mid size mid size and small size deals these the thorough reading and you know you being acquainted with the mna space in the country or you know or or for example in any any matured markets for example european union or the silicon valley etc if you are well versed with how mna is happening in these uh, uh, big, bigger markets you would you would have a predefined skill set and once you are on the job your that skill set is reflected in your working papers in your presentations in the strategy advices that you give you know how a consultant is different from a, a a strategy ceo who has been into the business how why a strategy ceo or a strategy uh, chief would hire a consultant because a strategy chief is he is an expert in his business he is hiring a consultant because a consultant has a 30000 feet view about a lot of things and by reading into mna consult continuously you would have that 30000 feet view developed over years so do that continuously do that just read about mna sp uh, spaces just open your uh, you know any newspaper money control any uh, any informative app like money control mint etc they have a separate section dedicated to mna deals so just do that and read about uh, why the merger is being carried out what are the synergies that the uh, board is uh, uh, expecting how did the merger actually take place what were the pitfalls of the merger prepare a full uh, database around it and build your perception around how these spaces evolving over a period of time that will really help you to be a star performer while you are on the job okay okay amazing wow uh, so so i think that was and and, and to add to that to yeah. uh, sorry sorry just i mean no, no, to add to that to add to that uh, do your case competitions very uh, uh, regularly and religiously because your case competitions would give you a view of how the things are moving in an organization so as an mna consultant you need to have a broad overview of all the functions of your organizations so uh, read about do your case competitions to understand the general management of a company or how how a company different functions of the company are interdependent on each other 
So develop that skill set of general management along with that read your MNA space, MNA transactions, be acquainted with MNA space, and that should be good to help you while you are uh, planning for a job in CDD or MNA consulting profiles. Okay. Okay. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, so, Shwam, thank you so much. I think it was very, very insightful. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that whosoever is listening to this, uh, this brief conversation would have gained a lot from it. Uh, as a, uh, you know, just I, what I'll do is I'll share the link to LinkedIn profile uh, of Shubham in the description. And, you know, if you, in case you guys, you have any, any query, you feel free to reach out to him. Absolutely. Any, any hour of the day. Okay. Thank you, Shubham. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bir. Thank you for giving me the opportunity.